What will you do in the face of Satan's attack? Well, that's a relevant question for all of us here because without exception, we're under a vicious, intense attack. But the question is, as the battle intensifies in our individual cases, will we be able to stand our ground, bravely fight, and come off victorious? Well, obviously, your desire is to be victorious, isn't it? You wouldn't be attending this special uh, program. But we need more than just the desire if we're going to ensure victory. In fact, to win any battle, we need accurate knowledge of three things. We need to know our enemy, know his strategy, and know what we have to defend ourselves. Now first, let's talk about our enemy, Satan. He is no ordinary foe. Jehovah educates us regarding uh, this enemy we're fighting. For one thing, he's a premeditated murderer. Look at what he did to Job's attendants, slaughtered them with marauder bands. Others were consumed with fire. Look at what he did to Job's 10 children. He murdered simultaneously all 10 of them with a violent windstorm. Yes, he's a premeditated murderer. He wants to murder into everlasting death every one of us here. What a cheerful talk this is. <laughs> this is Stephen Lett speaking at the 2021 annual meeting. His theme, we can be victorious over Satan's attack. And what is it with governing body members and fighting talk lately? False rumors are often spread during wartime. Brothers, this is war. We need to put up a hard fight for the faith as if our life depended on it. Because it does. Because without exception, we're under a vicious, intense attack. Will we be able to stand our ground, bravely fight, and come off victorious? There seems to be no let-up in the fighting talk from the governing body lately. I can imagine all of this must be very exhausting for Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> It's exhausting to be in a constant state of war, isn't it? For not just months, not just years, but decades. This is an organization that's been at war for decades, for a, over a hundred years. And that's going to be exhausting. I've never actually lived through a war, fortunately. I live in a part of the world that has seen a war recently in Croatia but I wasn't around for that war. But I've obviously spoken to people who did live through the war. Diana lived through the war. And it was a very, very traumatic experience. It's traumatic to live in a state of existential dread because there are literally people going around killing in your country. So for Jehovah's Witnesses to just be kept in this constant state of, oh, I'm at war, <laughs> oh, I'm in this existential fight. You heard there David Splain at the Powerful by Faith convention saying that Jehovah's Witnesses need to fight like their life depends on it. You know, that's going to take a toll. There's going to be some fatigue there, isn't there? For Jehovah's Witnesses, I can only hope that at least some witnesses watching this sort of fighting rhetoric will just be overwhelmed with fatigue by it all and just think, are we really still fighting? <laughs> I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of hating. I'm tired of hating people you want me to hate just because they're saying things that reflect badly on you or on your organization. I actually was watching this talk by Stephen Lett, expecting him to start talking about apostates. I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> here is yet another apostate bashing talk. Turns out he actually doesn't say the word apostate once in this talk. Instead, it's a more generic talk in which he is stirring up fear and hysteria regarding Satan, 
regarding the evil of Satan and how Jehovah's Witnesses need to resist this evil. And I found it fascinating that in trying to do this, Stephen Letts said the following. For one thing, he's a premeditated murderer. Look at what he did to Job's attendants, slaughtered them with marauder bands. Others were consumed with fire. Look at what he did to Job's ten children. He murdered simultaneously all ten of them with a violent windstorm. Yes, he's a premeditated murderer. So Satan is apparently a premeditated murderer. And as evidence of this, Stephen Lett points to the book of Job, where Satan apparently kills numerous people. I actually did some digging on this because it brought to mind this argument that you occasionally hear, and it's a good argument, which is to say, if we compare God's murders and God's deaths against Satan's murders and Satan's deaths, in other words, if we compare the body count in the Bible of those killed by God against those killed by Satan, <laughs> who comes off as the biggest killer? And there's actually a book out called Drunk With Blood, God's Killings in the Bible. I've not read it, but I found the title fascinating. It's a book by Steve Wells. The title, Drunk With Blood, is based on a verse in Deuteronomy 32, verses 39 to 42. See now that I, I am he, and there are no gods apart from me. I put to death and I make alive. I wound and I will heal, and no one can rescue from my hand. For I raise my hand to heaven, and I swear as surely as I live forever, if I sharpen my flashing sword and prepare my hand for judgment, I will pay back vengeance on my adversaries and bring retribution to those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword will eat flesh. With the blood of the slain and the captives, with the heads of the leaders of the enemy. Pretty gruesome, isn't it? So these are apparently the words of God. And he's not conveying the attitude of, well, when I need to kill, I will kill. But it's not something that I enjoy doing. It's just something that's necessary. No, towards the end there, there's quite a bit of bloodlust, isn't there? My arrow's drunk with blood and my sword will eat flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives, with the heads of the leaders of the enemy. Yeah, God seems a bit bloodthirsty. And going back to this verse in Job, when you actually read it, I'm not sure Stephen Lett's summary is all that accurate. He says that Satan killed Job's attendants using marauder bands, well, the book of Job itself just describes Sabians and Chaldeans killing Job's servants. He also says others were consumed with fire. Look at what he did to Job's attendants, slaughtered them with marauder bands. Others were consumed with fire. Well, when you read the verse itself in Job 1 verse 16, it says, while he was still speaking, another one came and said, fire from God fell from the heavens and blazed among the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. So the Bible, bearing in mind the Bible is God's word, the Bible has an account of a servant ascribing it to fire from God and God's word doesn't bother to correct this servant and say, but it wasn't fire from God, it was fire from Satan. Stephen Lett is, in my view, putting words into the mouths of the Bible writers. You can, I suppose, argue that Job's ten children were killed by Satan. But here's the interesting thing. 
they were the only ones in the Bible that Satan, who we've learned is a premeditated murderer, they were the only ones that the Bible itself describes Satan killing. And when you go to the website Why Evolution is True, it's by Dr. Jerry Coyne, who I've interviewed on the channel. I'll drop a link in the description. There's an interesting blog post, Murders, God versus Satan, and he references this book by Steve Wells. There are two figures for the numbers killed by God. One is based purely on what's written in the Bible, and that's nearly two and a half million. That's just based on what the Bible says. And then the second figure is kind of more realistically, if we estimate what the true figure would be accounting for all of the stories where the Bible doesn't give firm numbers, that would be closer to 25 million people killed by God. And then you look at the book of Job, and on Satan's side, Satan kills 10. Now, even if we take Stephen Lett's words at face value and we say, oh, well, the fire wasn't from God, the fire was from Satan, and actually the marauder bands were being influenced by Satan, well, first of all, God actually allowed Satan to do this. If you read in the book of Job, Job 1 verse 12 says, Then Jehovah said to Satan, Look, everything that he has is in your hand. Only do not lay your hand on the man himself. So Satan went out from the presence of Jehovah. So God essentially gives Satan permission to do all this, <laughs> which I think is important context. God has the ability to intervene and decides not to, decides that Satan should just have at it. But even if we give Satan all of the deaths mentioned in Job chapter 1, we're still talking, I don't know, maybe a few dozen deaths compared to between two and a half million and 25 million deaths chalked up to God's bloodlust. And it is a bloodlust based on what we read earlier in Deuteronomy. And before any of you start saying, oh, now he's a Satanist, <laughs> I've tuned into this apostate channel and look, this apostate is speaking out in defense of Satan. I'm really not. I don't think any of this happened. I think it's all a totally fictional narrative. Some scholars even suggest that the character Job is a fictitious character. The whole book of Job was written, inspired by a historical figure from another culture, called Jobob. That's one theory that scholars have. But I don't really take any of this seriously. I think when you read the, the story of Job, and certainly when you get into some of the bizarre language that Job's comforters come out with, and some of the incredibly unscientific things that are said in this book, it's just obvious that the whole thing is the product of a very overactive imagination, quite frankly. I don't think any of this happened. I don't think the Old Testament is actual history, apart from when we get to the line of Judean kings. There isn't any archaeological evidence for anything earlier than David. And even David, there's kind of fairly tenuous archaeological evidence for David, but we can just about make an argument for David's existence. But prior to David, no, I'm sorry, I don't think any of this happened. So I'm certainly not speaking out for Satan. I do just find it interesting that Stephen Lett is trying to build this image to frighten Jehovah's Witnesses by calling Satan out as a premeditated murderer. And when you actually do the digging and bother to look up the verses he's talking about, and contextualize these verses against the accounts about God and God's murderous rampages. At the very least, if you are a believer, or if you're a Jehovah's Witness, it should give you some food for thought. 